Welcome to an introduction to second order linear ordinary differential equations, as well as superposition, existence and uniqueness, and linear independence. Let's begin by considering the general second order linear differential equation shown here at the top. If we divide through by big A of x, we get the form y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals f of x. The word linear means that the equation contains no powers nor functions of y, y prime, and y double prime. In this special case, when f of x on the right is equal to zero, we have a homogeneous equation. We'll call this equation 2.2. We've already seen some second order linear homogeneous equations, for example, y double prime plus k squared y equals zero, where two solutions are y1 equals cosine kx and y2 equals sine kx. And of course, if we went or two, we could verify this. We've also seen that y double prime minus k squared y equals zero, where two solutions are y1 equals e to the power of kx and y2 equals e to the power of negative kx. And again, if we went or two, we could verify this, but if we know two solutions of a linear homogeneous equation, we know many more of them. Which brings us to the theorem on superposition. Suppose y1 and y2 are two solutions of the homogeneous equation 2.2, which again is shown here in the blue box. Then y of x equals c1 times y1 of x plus c2 times y2 of x also solves the differential equation for arbitrary constants c1 and c2. That is, we can add solutions together and multiply them by constants to determine new and different solutions. We call the expression c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2 a linear combination of y1 and y2. Let's prove this linear combination does satisfy the second order linear homogeneous equation shown here in the blue box. First we substitute the linear combination in for y and then we need to find the first and second derivatives which are shown here in the second line. Next we group the c1 and c2 terms together and then factor out c1 and c2. Recall we already know that y1 and y2 are solutions to the second order linear homogeneous equation. And therefore we know that y1 double prime plus p times y1 prime plus q times y1 is equal to zero. And we also know y2 double prime plus p times y2 prime plus q times y2 is also equal to zero. Simplifying, we do have the proof the linear combination of y1 and y2 does satisfy the second order linear homogeneous differential equation. In addition, linear equations have nice and simple answers to the existence and uniqueness question. Which brings us to theorem 2.1.2. Suppose p, q, and f are continuous functions on some interval i, a is a number in the interval i, and a, b sub zero, and b one are constants. Then the equation y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals f of x has exactly one solution y of x defined on the same interval i satisfying the initial conditions y of a equals b sub zero and y prime of a equals b one. As an example, the equation y double prime plus k squared y equals zero with initial conditions y of zero equals b sub zero and y prime of zero equals b one has the solution y of x equals b sub zero cosine of kx plus b one divided by k times sine kx. Looking at our notes below, remember, we already know that y one equals cosine kx and y two equals sine kx are two solutions. Using superposition, we also know y of x equals c one cosine kx plus c two times sine kx satisfies the differential equation. From here, let's verify the initial conditions are met when c sub one equals b sub zero and c sub two equals b one divided by k. Let's first verify y of zero equals b sub zero. Subbing in zero for x, we have c one cosine zero plus c two sine zero equals b sub zero. Simplifying, we do get c one equals b sub zero. And now let's verify that y prime of zero equals b one. Subbing in x equals zero to the derivative function, we have negative c one k sine zero plus c two k cosine zero equals b sub one. Simplifying and solving for c sub two, we do get c sub two equals b one divided by k. So this does verify 
This is the solution to the initial value problem. This last theorem builds on superposition. Let P and Q be continuous functions. Let Y1 and Y2 be two linear independent solutions to the homogeneous equation 2.2, which again is shown here in the blue box. Then every solution is of the form Y equals C1 times Y1 plus C2 times Y2. That is, Y equals C1 times Y1 plus C2 times Y2 is the general solution. Recall the theorem on superposition just said that this Y satisfied the differential equation, not that it was a general solution. But now we know it's also the general solution as long as Y1 and Y2, the two solutions are linearly independent. For example, Y1 equals sine X and Y2 equals cosine X are solutions to Y double prime plus Y equals zero. And since sine X and cosine X are not constant multiples of one another, they are linearly independent, and therefore the general solution to Y double prime plus Y equals zero is Y equals C1 times cosine X plus C2 times sine X. I hope you found this introduction helpful.